here in Austin at the Big 5G event. I'm joined by Pablo Tomasi from Omdia, my colleague. Uh, Pablo, nice to, nice to see you here over in America. Yeah, finally um, I'm, I'm here. Thank you very much for having me. So, um, I mean, your area, your, your topic is very much uh, private enterprise. Um, and I guess I'm interested in, in finding out what you, you know, what you think about what's going on in America, I guess, compared with, with Europe, where you're based, what the contrast is that you see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Quite, quite a few interesting bits and pieces. First of all, I mean, from my point of view, it's very nice to see that uh, private networks is becoming sort of one of the key events, one of the key themes that everyone wants to talk about. We saw that at NWC and now we're seeing it here at Big 5G. A lot of mention of private networks, a lot of mention of how to monetize that opportunity. Now, if we need to think a little bit of the differences that we see between the US market and uh, say Europe, although then Europe becomes very fragmented as well, uh, I, I think there are a few big differences. But first of all, the spectrum that is available, I mean, everyone knows about CBRS, very different from what, for instance, is happening in Germany. But at the same time, we see uh, telcos' involvement. You know, the timeline for their involvement, the type of solutions they want to offer in this market are quite different in the U.S. compared to Europe. And the last, uh, really, the last thing that I want to highlight, probably hyperscalers' ambition for the U.S. versus the rest of the world, can be treated as something that is uh, is different that will shape the market differently. Okay. I mean, you mentioned CBRS there, and. You know, from my perspective, and Germany as well. I mean, we saw uh, the German government sort of reserve spectrum for for uh, organisations, and it was a bit of a controversial move. I know the telcos complained about it, and we now see some of those companies building their own networks. But is there a is there a similar thing happening with CBRS here, or is it very different how it how it works? So the the bottom line of the market when it comes to private networks is very simple, right? Uh, before there was no spectrum available for the enterprise, so the market was pretty much non-existent. Now, government have started providing spectrum to the enterprise in different ways. It could be like a CBRS shared model, it could be a German dedicated model, it doesn't matter. But when the spectrum becomes available for the enterprise, that's when the market starts. Now, what, what becomes different is that depending on the spectrum approach that the country has, may or may not drive different level of innovation. So for instance, here in the US, CBRS, very cheap spectrum effectively, you can pretty much free spectrum if you want to consider it that way, and is driving a lot of innovation. You have startups, you have you know, smaller specialist companies that are trying to, to ride this wave of new spectrum and new market. Other countries, you don't see that much innovation, but you see more of some traditional players, maybe some industrial players as well, trying to make the most of this market. So uh, effectively, these are two, they start from the same uh, um, idea, spectrum for the enterprise, but then the market will develop differently. Okay, and, and when it comes to 5G, I mean, is that a technology that's having a big impact here? Or a lot of the, and I've heard it said before that a lot of the use cases and applications can actually be done with 4G technology anyway, or, or other tech technologies. So is, is 5G galvanizing things at all, or not so much? So 5G has a critical role, but it's not the critical role in the deployment, so let's put it this way. The critical role is that because everyone wants to get there, everyone wants to eventually use whatever opportunity, whatever potential 5G will unlock. Now, currently, if you look uh, at the needs of the enterprise, if you look at what the enterprise wants, you are correct. You can easily use private LTE and support more than 95% of all use cases. So that is technology that is perfectly good to serve the enterprise at this point in time. Now, of course, when you're thinking about private nets, when an enterprise, uh, when you want to capture the attention of an enterprise, if you're you know, trying to capture it by talking about 5G, you're definitely getting more momentum, whether you're saying, okay, you know, you can use a technology that is LTE, which is, you know, has been around for a while, is very you know, robust, solid, can, can do the work. It's like, yes, sure, nice, no, but if you say, you know, future-looking technology, 5G, then you get a different reaction. And at the end of the day, this is a solution-driven market. So uh, whatever the problem of the enterprise is, you need to find the solution. You can use a set of technology, a set of services to pretty much create a solution for the enterprise. And that solution can be based on private 5G or more often they're not private LTE. And, and that's absolutely fine. Okay. The obsession with 5G is something that is very much tel telco-centered. But you can channel that in a productive way. Do you, do you have a sense of how, I mean, I know Omni does forecasting, but in, in terms of the, the impact of all this on the, on the size of the market, including the kind of macro market, you know, how, you know, if you look at players like Rakuten, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, they're talking about quite a lot of growth they're projecting in, in this market they're trying to go into. And I'm sort of curious how much of that is, is to do with the private enterprise opportunity or, um, you know, whether we should be more cautious, I guess. And, 
<laughs> I, I, I always tend to be a little bit on the cautious side, to be honest, because I'm talking with telcos, vendors, SI, hyperscalers, enterprises, startups, anyone that you can, that anyone that is part of this market. So I have a, a good picture of, you know, what's happening, what are the challenges, so what are the sales cycles as well, extremely important. Uh, so I know that this is a good opportunity, but it's also an opportunity that will take uh, a long time. And it's also a difficult market. Before we were like talking in very you know, high level terms about the differences between US and Europe, then in Europe, different countries, more fragmentation. So uh, there are a lot of moving parts, so it's a very difficult market. And this, just to say that, if you're looking at the global market, public networks, telco market and everything, private networks, it's a much smaller opportunity. Yeah. And it's going to be over the next few years. It's an important opportunity, potentially can change the way that the sector addresses the enterprise opportunity. And that's really the, the key of this market. But in terms of like, you know, dollar on dollar, I, I don't think there is a comparison yeah. at the moment. Uh, um, maybe just to finish, I mean, coming back to the, uh, the sort of internet giants, you know, the, the, the public clouds and, and their, their role in all of this. Um, I mean, it sounded like you were hinting they have sort of different ambitions in the US or a, a different kind of presence here than, than, you'd, than you'd see in Europe. I mean, is, is that a sort of fair characterization or are they, are they more aggressive in certain areas and geographies? Uh, without going too much into, into the details, but when I mentioned that CBRS is driving innovation, uh, a lot of that innovation, those smaller companies, uh, often are part of a hyperscaler ecosystem, if you want, so the hyperscaler can have a larger play there, and as a consequence of this, can get more exposure uh, into this CBRS market. Now, of course, they're going to target, you know, anywhere, you know, they're hyperscaler for, for one reason, but this environment is particularly well suited as, as the first step. And in fact, uh, if you have been following AWS private 5G announcement, uh, it, they are starting, it's, it's in sort of a soft launch, it's beta phase, whatever you want to call it, and they're starting here in the US uh, with CBRS. So that's a, another example. Okay, let's start here. It's easier environment for us to get started. Let's see how it goes, and then eventually develop. So it's, it's a really competitive area, isn't it? I mean, you have these guys up Absolutely. against the likes of Ericsson and Nokia. You're sort of wondering, I'm, I'm wondering at the moment, who's going to sort of come out on top and how it's, how it's going to change. It, it, yeah. These things are going to change quite rapidly <laughs> for a while, and there's going to be some, some significant developments in the market, so stay tuned on private networks. Thanks very much for joining me, Pablo. Thank you very much for having me. Have a great day.